Yeah, thank you to uh, Market for the invitation and the opportunity to talk about uh, big data in healthcare and, and biology. Indeed, the situation in uh, biology when it comes to data has changed uh, considerably uh, during the last 10, 20 years. Early on, many years ago, uh, there was not a lot, a lot of data in biology, a few data points on a plot and no need for, for computers. But this has uh, changed uh, completely. Now we have a ton of data in biology and we need computers uh, ever more than, than, um, than before. And the reason for this is first and uh, foremost, this curve that you see here, uh, this is the cost of DNA sequencing. And you can see that it goes down. And uh, interestingly, a lot of data generation in science, in, in particular in, in, in biology, was sort of a single investigator based in many ways. But now data generation has become industrialized to, 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 um, many, in many ways. And uh, this means often you know, any process that becomes industrialized leads to exponential decline in, in, in cost. And this is what you see here. We have a logarithmic axis to the left, and you have time uh, on the x-axis here. And you see that, that until 2007, sort of, it was uh, smooth sailing. We had exponential growth in the data. Data used to double every nine months. But then suddenly, there was a leap in technology that made it even cheaper. So essentially, DNA sequencing will, uh, the cost of DNA sequencing will, will, will uh, go away, and we will be able to sequence ourselves many times during our lifetime. We will be able to sequence all the bacteria that lives inside us, all the plants, a lot of different organisms, uh, because the, the, the cost is, is, uh, is going down. So in biology, not only DNA sequences, but a ton of other data are accumulating. And you see here another graph uh, that, that um, illustrates the, um, the growth in the number of databases. And these are serious databases. I mean, this is linearly increased, but still hundreds of databases are seeing um, uh, it is being observed on the web every year. And, and so it's not just DNA sequences, it is uh, protein structures, it is gene expression data, it is protein interaction data, and a lot of other data types which are growing in this way, growing uh, exponentially. And we have to deal with it in, in the fields of bioinformatics and, and systems uh, biology. So a lot of these data are from the sort of molecular worlds with the genes and with the proteins and, 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 and with all the details on the small molecules inside us and so on. But when you look at this uh, graph, of course, what we would like to do, taking all this molecular stuff, we would like to use it to understand diseases and to sort of under, understand the phenotypic macroscopic uh, world. And uh, we would also like to sort of use the disease patterns and how they co-occur to, of course, understand the molecular data and how the mutations in our DNA sequences actually leads to diseases and maybe co-occurring, um, co-occurrence of, 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 of uh, diseases. So, so we are not only faced with molecular level data, but also with data from the hospital sector, from the healthcare sector, on how diseases manifest themselves. And of course, these data come, for example, from electronic patient records uh, and, other, and other sources. We have today, uh, due to this situation with, with, with big data uh, becoming possible in biology and, and medicine, we have a huge focus on the individual. I mean, we don't care anymore whether 10% will die from smoking uh, and so on and so forth. We would like to know whether we would have an, an increased risk from, from, from this and this kind of, of, of behavior. So we zoom in on the individual and we want data that describes the individual and the individual's risk for, for, for disease. This is the trend now uh, a days. And of course, if you would like to uh, gather data on individual diseases and, 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 and also how uh, diseases develop um, during uh, the lifetime of individual. We have to look to, to, to data like electronic uh, patient records. Patient records used to be on paper, but they are now going electronic all over the world almost at the same time. So we have this enormous growth 
in molecular data, but also the disease-related data, the phenotypic data, is also growing in the, in, in the same way. So we have a data explosion both at the molecular side, but also at the sort of high-level disease side. And now we work in bioinformatics and systems biology on integrating these data. And, and, and the idea is, for example, to, to find uh, genes which are playing a role in more than one, one disease, but I will return to, to, to that. In Denmark, we have a very good situation with electronic patient records because we went electronic quite, quite early in many contexts at the Danish hospital. So we can actually take the patient records, and you see here a wordle that describe uh, Danish disease uh, terms and side effects and, uh, and a lot of terms from the sort of healthcare world. This is from a cohort from a mental hospital, and you see all the, the, the words here. And we can basically also make this kind of analysis at the level of individual patient records, where we can compare the words and the terms used in different patient records, and we can use it to quantify the similarity between uh, patients sort of uh, for, for, for using uh, maps of entire cohorts of patients where we can tr uh, use it to, to choose treatment and also, of course, um, trying to understand at the molecular level why this patient here with these terms differ from another um, uh, patient. Maybe it relates to the mutation in the sequences of, of, of the DNA. It might also relate to the, to the treatment. So Danes are good if you would like to study the relationship between uh, genes and diseases, because in Denmark we live a pretty wild uh, life. We um, die early. Uh, we smoke a lot. We, we eat a lot of very unhealthy food. So, so, of course, it's a little bit boring if you are after disease genes to go for a population that lives until they are 110. But in Denmark, we die uh, quite early. So, so we, we are not only having a lot of disease phenotype, we also have data and big data on them in electronic form that we can analyze in, in, um, in, 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 in computers. These data in biology and, and medicine, they are quite different from many other types of big data. The big data used to be something that we found in, 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 in physics, for example, at CERN with the Large Hadron Collider or from big astronomy scans and so on. But of course, these data have, no, have essentially no commercial value. There are also no ethical issues with, 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 with the Higgs particle or something uh, li li like that. Nobody wants to steal them because it costs a fortune to, to keep them because they are enormous. But this is, of course, very different in biology where we have legal issues and, and we have ethical uh, issues. So, so keeping these data safe and inventing models and infrastructure for sharing the data is, is a completely different kettle of fish from, from the situation in, in, in physics and astronomy. That, that traditionally was the model for, for handling uh, big data, but we cannot use that model in biology in many ways. We are much more similar maybe to situations like, uh, like for example, in banking, in home banking, where you need to deal with data that covers the entire population, and also you need to deal with a lot of security around your, your home banking uh, accounts and so on. So, so uh, there's a lot of data sensitivity in this uh, area. So you can, of course, use the data for a ton of things when you are looking for uh, disease genes and you would like to discover uh, ways to, to better ways to treat uh, patients and so on. But for example, the electronic patient records, we, we use them, for example, for discovering comorbidities. So of course, diseases are often uh, studied one disease at a time. But of course, real patients, they have more than one disease. They basically have sort of a spectrum of, of diseases. Of course, there is also a temporal element to the diseases, but, but diseases co-occur. And of course, we can pick up data on this co-occurrence at the level of human individuals from patient records. And it's a little bit of a complicated figure here, but we basically have 100 diseases here from a mental hospital, and we also have them down here, and then they are clustered so that we see which 
uh, diseases go, go, goes together. And um, all this business of, of analyzing disease co-occurrence is um, important because we now think that many of the genes that we have, and we have roughly 25,000 protein coding genes, uh, many of the genes they share um, uh, they are sort of shared between diseases in, in, in the early days with genes. One thought that was sort of one uh, trait was related just to one, 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 one gene um, and not to several genes, but most complex diseases like diabetes and cancer and so on, they involve hundreds and maybe thousands of, of, of genes. There is not one particular gene uh, that can be used sort of as, as a biomarker for choosing the right chemotherapy or the right treatment uh, regime in, 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 um, in diabetes. So, so when we discover that two diseases co-occur much more often than we would uh, expect based on the individual frequencies of, of, of the diseases, then we can go back to the molecular level and we can look up the networks of genes and, 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 and see how they interact. And maybe two very different diseases like you see here, baldness and migraine, they are very different phenotypically, uh, but maybe they, they, uh, they actually share a gene as, as, as you see here. And of course the idea is then to, to integrate the, the, the data, not just use the, um, uh, the, the genetic data, but a lot of other data types uh, that can be used to, to discover new disease uh, mechanisms. So there's a small plot in the corner here on unstructured data versus structured data. And this is very uh, important in the context of big uh, data because a lot of the data we have in electronic patient records and in, in the literature, it's just unstructured. It's, it's not sort of put into a proper database. So many of the methods we use to integrate data, they have to work on unstructured uh, data. And Google has indeed shown how this can be done. Even if nobody structured the data on the web, you can design me methods that actually can handle the unstructured data. And they grow, as you can see down here, much faster. So in biology, finally here, uh, data is becoming very cheap. We are talking about uh, maybe $1,000 genome for a human uh, genome, it used to cost $3 million to generate the first human, three billion, sort of, three billion um, um, uh, dollars and, 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 and a lot of, of, of money to generate the data, but that cost is now declining rapidly for many data types, but the, the cost is sort of shifting to the analysis, the interpretation. So it might cost you almost nothing to have your genome sequenced, but, but maybe it cost you a man year to get it analyzed so that it can be used clinically to make, to, to make uh, decisions. So this is the, the big change in biology that, that data uh, have become cheap, but the an analysis is now the expensive uh, part. So I, I went through uh, some of the uh, trends in, in biology and, on, and medicine, and I talked about the molecular data, and I also talked about the sort of high-level phenotypic data. Both data types are exploding. We need to, to integrate them in order to find new disease genes and new, new uh, treatments. And uh, I have here a um, short list of some of the collaborators that contributed to some of the work that I have been, been talking about. If you would like to learn more about how to analyze uh, electronic uh, patient records and, 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 and also text mining of patient records. There is a review here in Nature Reviews Genetics that you can look for on, um, on the net, uh, where we go through all these issue of issues of integrating the molecular data with the phenotypic data from the healthcare sector. A little bit more detail in that uh, review that was published in 2012. So uh, thank you again for your uh, atten attention and for the invitation to, um, to speak here in the context of the market work. Thank you.